human like terrestrial so firstly my camera is set up a little differently today because i'm also very shiny because highlighter but um because usually i'm slightly more over there because i'm gonna go through my bookshelf with you today i might have three bookshelves about this size and i'm gonna tour you this one i might do a video on my more contemporary and classics one I don't know if I will do the one that's over there because it's behind my bed and it's very difficult to kind of show you. I might show you the books on it, but I might I won't be able to show you like a good angle of the bookshelf because I can't really see it because it's hiding behind my bed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just showing you now that this is what these two shelves look like. Um, the books that I have turned around are books I've not read yet. So the more I read, the more full my bookshelf will look. Um, I'm just showing you the fullness of this now. And then I'm going to take them off and put them back on as I talk to you because it's more of a pain to take them out than to put them away. So, the bookshelf is empty and slightly dusty. Oops. Um, here we go. So the first book I have on my shelf is The Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. Um, this whole series is basically about a girl called Lyra who... Let's learn to speak uh about a girl called lyra in like a fantasy world and it has some sort of different universe elements it's really cool i really enjoy it i have the first one and the second one the cell knife which i've both read i apologize if i'm you know it'd be easier to sit from this side actually um over here we're over here now um yeah, we'll get there um and i also have the third one the Amber Spyglass. However, I have not yet, at the time of filming this, read that. Um, so I can't really tell you what it's about. But it's going there. Next, I have another series which I have not yet read any of, unfortunately. And that is The Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Um, this is like a classic fantasy trilogy, if I remember rightly. Um, it's in the same, it's in the Grishaverse, so it's in the same universe as lots of other books that people talk about. Uh, like Six of Crows is in the same universe. And people talk about that a lot, but I would quite like to read this trilogy first. Um, I like to go in order, but it tends to just mean that I'm always behind on books, unfortunately. So, this trilogy. Fabulous. Next, I have a series I have read. I'm not going to hold you them all up at once, but we're going to go through them. So, it is the entirety of the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. So, we have Set Your Bones, City of Angels. City of Glass, City of Fallen, Fallen, wait, what is it called? Fallen Angels, yes. Um, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire. Um, this is an urban fantasy book, uh, series about, well, it's point of view, first point of view character is um, Clary Fairchild or Free or whatever name, um, who is basically a girl who is just thrust into this fantasy world and she discovers that she is a shadow hunter and part of this um which is not at all a spoiler because if you're on booktube you will likely be aware of this series so next i have a trilogy that i recently read um which is also in the shadow hunter universe it is the what am i calling it the infernal vices trilogy so i have clockwork angel clockwork prince and Clockwork Princess. Um, this is a trilogy about a girl called uh, Tessa, who is also thrust into a fantastical or um, fantasy world. Basically, um, she is she's moving from America to London um, to visit her brother, and gets caught up in some shadow hunter business. Basically, is what happens. Um, and discovers that she's part of this world and all that sort of thing. It's very typical of Cassie Clare, but we're there. So the next one I have is also part of the series, I have not read it, and that is The Bane Chronicles by many people. Cassandra Clare, Sarah Rhys Brennan and Maureen Johnson. Um, this is a short story collection of lots of stories about Magnus Bane, who is one of the sort of side characters in the Shadowhunters universe. Um, he's popped up in Certainly at least the first two series in Shadowhunter Chronicles. I don't know about the others, but I'm assuming he's in them too. Um, he's a side character I love. A lot of people were disappointed by these. I've read a few. I think I've read two or three stories in this. I um, were here. I've read some of it. 
I put it on pause because it's the sort of thing that I think I just want to pick up when I just need some Magnus in my life. Um, but yeah, this has, I think, 11 stories? 9 or 11. Hmm. Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, 11 stories. In this universe, by the way, to clarify, Magnus Bane is a warlock and it's basically just his stories throughout time. This is another one that I own but haven't read and that is Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Rees Brennan, Maureen Johnson and Robin Wasserman or Wasserman or whatever. Um, this is, I believe, the story of Simon after the events of the Mortal Instruments series, um, which if you've read the series, you will understand why that's an interesting plot point. If not, you will find out. Um, this is a big book. Oh, it's not that big. It's lots of different, it's like 600 and, it's like 650 pages long. It's a pretty big book. Um, and it's like little, it's cause it's tales. It's like, in, as opposed to like being, it's like a similar sort of story, sort of story collection to being Chronicles where it's lots of little stories as opposed to one big, Tale, um, which is why it's called Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy, and I'm quite excited about it, but we've not got there yet. So that is my first shelf. I will see you when we can go through this one. So, we're empty, let's go through them. First, I have the entirety of the Percy Jackson series. So, I and I've read them all and I really enjoyed them. So, we have The Lightning Thief. The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, <laughs> The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian. I unfortunately got these in covers that I don't like. I'd really enjoy having either the original covers or the ones that were released recently. However, I got that. I think these might be the British covers where I just don't... Just not a fan. I don't think they look as cool. Um, but Percy Jackson, the series of a demigod called Percy Jackson um, who again as a lot of like urban fantasy series do he didn't know that he was part of this thing and then he got thrust into it which is very typical but it's very good um next I have the entirety bar one of the Heroes of Olympus by Rick Riordan series um the reason I so I have the lost hero which I have read um and my copy of, oh goodness, what's it even called? I don't even remember what it's called, I have it. Here. I have The Son of Neptune, however, it's not on my shelf at the moment, because I am reading it. Um, so I'm truly like a chapter and a half in, um, but it's not on my bookshelf as a result of that. So next, the next one I have is The Mark of Athena. Um, then the House of Hades and the Blood of Olympus. So, I would also usually have the Sun of Neptune here, but I'm reading it at the moment, so it's not on my bookshelf. Um, this is a sort of sequel series to the Percy Jackson series from the point of view of Jason, who is a kid who wakes up in a bus one day and doesn't know where he is and he's like doesn't remember anything like all of his memory is just gone um, and it's kind of the series the first book is about him trying to figure out why he's lost his memory and what because people that are around him remember him and feel like he's been there for like months and um, however he doesn't remember any of it so they're trying to figure out what's going on and it's called the lost hero because during the duration of this book which is set somewhat after the first series Percy Jackson is lost and they don't know why. So the next book I have is also one I haven't read and that is Snuff by Terry Pratchett. I want to get into Terry Pratchett novels. Um, I know nothing about the Discworld series or where to start. I know they're mostly interchangeable, like you don't have to start a particular book. Um, however, I've been told that this isn't a great starting point, so I have it, but I don't know if I'll read it until I read some of the other ones that are more important. This is basically about a commander, um, he's like a, he's like a, he's a commander on a bus. Yeah. 
apparently. I know very little about it. Um, I've been told to start with Dodger maybe or or um, a few others, but I'm not sure yet. But this is an awesome cover and I saw it in Waterstones and just wanted to pick it up, so I did. Um, the next I have is a book I have read. Another floppy one, unfortunately, and that is Carry On by Rinpo Rawo. Um, this is the story of a boy called Simon um, who is... This is kind of like, a, I guess it was a companion novel, um, but not so much anymore because it's become its own thing, um, to Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell because this is basically the fan fiction that the main character in Fangirl writes. Um, and that's, yeah, this is basically the fan fiction of that and I thought it was fantastic and very well written and read like fan fiction in all the best ways. Um, and there are, it's going to be a trilogy, I think, um, and the sequel is already out, but I've not got it yet because I'm waiting for the paperback release. And also lockdown means that, you know, shipping is weird, even though I've pre-ordered the paperback version. So we'll see when that arrives. Um, but yes, this is fantastic. But the, the, the kind of tagline is, Simon Snow is the worst chosen one who's ever been chosen. Um, and it's like kind of has a Harry Potter vibe, but it's different and I really enjoyed it. So yes, the next one I have is also one I haven't read. It is a recent buy and that is A Quickie and Mezzi's Pet. This is about a girl called, I think, Jam's her name? Yes. Jam, who is a, he's a kid in a universe where monsters used to exist but no longer do and she sees monsters with her friends but every time she tries to tell parents or authorities they don't believe her so the tagline of this is but how do you save the world from monsters if no one will admit they exist and it's also middle grade and i'm just so excited about it and it looks fantastic so i'm very excited um the next one i have is another one i've read um and that is good omens by terry pratchett and neil gaiman i think probably in theory actually i should put my just as i'm sitting here i'm just realizing i should probably put my terry pratchett books together um, but this is a book about an angel and a demon trying to stop Armageddon. And if that doesn't make you want to read it, I don't know what does. Um, there was a show that came out recently with, well, like last year, with David Tennant and Michael Sheen, which I watched, which was fantastic. But I really enjoyed this book. Um, and I also got the Waterstones cover just because when the show was coming out, there was an exclusive Waterstones cover. And I think I prefer it to the original one, although now I would quite like to also have the white cover because I think it's cool. <laughs> so yes, I'm going to move that there just so all my Terry Pratchett's in one place. Um, the next one I have is The Eternal Ones by Kirsten Miller. This is a book I read when I was like 13 maybe. Um, it's about reincarnation and about romance throughout reincarnation. And there's this girl in it whose name I do not remember. Um, my goodness. See her name? Let's see. Haven Moore. It's such a typical name for these characters. But uh, she basically keeps having dreams about a past romance with a guy called Ethan. And she... Um, she has to meet and work with this like celebrity and she realizes she recognizes him but she doesn't know how and things ensue um it's one of those books that at the time i loved it but i think since my reading taste has matured and changed i don't ever read it again but i'd like to keep it. i'd like to keep it because i remember loving it but i don't want to ever read it again because i feel like i will ruin the original love that i did have for it however isn't this cover cool it has holographic shininess isn't that dope um but yeah, I loved it, and I know it became a series, I think, but I'm this book on its own stood the test of time for me, stood the test for me, but I don't think it will stand the test of time, so I'm not going to continue with it. So, next I have a book that I bought a long time ago that I completely forgot about, which is Ms. Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I, um, I found this in my mother's bookshelf, and I was like, I bought that, didn't I? Um... And I put it back on my bookshelf 90% because of Jesse the Reader, because this is one of his favourite novels of all time, probably his favourite book of all time, is this. Um, and it's about 
it's kind of just like about a, a like a it's like a weird foster home for like magical kids i think i don't know a lot about it i know that people abide by it i know very little about it however but it looks really interesting and you know it's john green certified so you know it's like a, a, a well-beloved novel if john green has a thing on the back um that's a joke because he says that to it he like gives thoughts on all the books he loves online and they always end up in the backs of books because he's a well-known author um or it's, they certainly used to um next i have a book by kai hope lecture that i have not read and that is when the curtains falls this is a story about well okay uh, the easiest way to explain it is it's a ghost showmance so it's it's like a like a showmance is like a show romance so like when people were performing and doing shows together they fell in love um and there's ghosts and i don't know a lot more than that however that alone allures me to this book and also the fact that it's kai hope fletcher as well as the gorgeous cover so i'm very excited about it it looks super cool and i'm gonna get to it eventually it's also not very long because kai hope fletcher's books are like 350 pages usually so when i do read it you'll know my thoughts but i'm quite excited about it actually next i have all that she can see by Carol Fletcher, which is a book that I have read. I like this book. This is about a girl called Cherry, who basically can she sees these physical embodiments of people's negative emotions and their feelings. So, for example, a, she sees someone's they're like kind of sort of I would they look like sort of demons. She has a specific name for them. What they are, truly don't remember. Um, but basically she can see like physical investment so it's like a little creature crawling behind a girl who's depressed that sort of thing that is her depression that sort of thing and she basically bakes to kind of help do good and get rid of these emotions and um, so she this is all fine and dandy until she meets someone that knows what she's doing so it's really interesting and it's a romance but it's like a kind is magical realism like a lot of Carrie's books and I really enjoyed it actually I thought it was fantastic and I love Cherry's character I thought she was such a cool character so yes the next book is another one which I don't think I ever want to read again because I don't think it would stand the test of time but I know a lot of people do love it and that is Every Day by David Levithan um this has a sequel I think and um, again probably never going to read it this is, but this is a book about basically a person who every day wakes up in a different person's body, in a different house, in a different environment. And this is about what happens when that, well, they say A, they use A as what the person is, as their name. And one day they wake up and they fall in love. And it's kind of the story of how the heck that works and complex feelings. And I think... I probably would have wanted to read another story but if I remember rightly the sequel yeah the sequel is another day which is opposed to being like you know a continuation of the story because I would have quite liked seeing continuation it's a companion novel from the romance the romantic interest point of view which I don't know that I would find very interesting um maybe without rereading this I would probably be interested because I have forgotten a lot of what happens um, I remember there's, like, someone, like, I, I remember little details, and I don't know if they were meant to be expanded on or not, but I, yes, this was enjoyable at the time, I read this at the same sort of time that I read this, and, like, The Five People You Meet in Heaven and some other books I really loved, but I don't know that I would ever want to read this again, and because I did really like it, so I don't want to taint my feelings on it. The next one I have is a little novella, um, and that is Barely a Lady by Cassandra Naw. This is a were-bear romance. Um, it's about a girl called... Oh my god, I'm so bad with names, I'm so sorry. Um, I have no idea, I can't remember. Um, but basically this girl, this girl, icon, is a were-bear, so every month she turns into a, a bear and she's also bi and 
looking into dating and it was just such like a nice little thing. Um, I saw someone talking about it on YouTube, probably um, Problems of Book Nerd, um, and I was just really interested and it was really sweet and like a nice cool story. So yes, that. I really, really, really enjoyed it. The next one, or the last one on this shelf, is a book I have not read yet. And that's The Familiars by Stacey Halls. Now this is a book about, um, well no, it's basically about witches in 1612 and like a friendship that leads to someone trying to stop someone from getting killed because of witchcraft and it, of witchcraft and it just looked really intriguing and the cover is also gorgeous. Um, but I just got really excited about it and I bought it on a whim one day so we're gonna get to it eventually but I don't know that my brain's in the mood for that right now. We can move on to my bottom shelf which has less books on it. Okay so we're down here I'm not gonna be able to show my face through a lot of this um but there's literally only the space on my bookshelf because over here I have a big paint thing that has lots of paints and that's lovely and wonderful but it means that there's less books on the shelf and it's just the way I organized it and that was my intention to organize it like that so let's go through these shelves first i have a trilogy and um, if i can get it to sit properly and that trilogy is that they're sitting backwards but it's the legends series um by marie lou so this is if i remember like a lay misery telling and it's a dystopian so we have legend by marie lou um prodigy and champion so there's those. I don't know a lot about them, and um, I picked them up on a limb one day because I wanted to read them, and I just haven't got around to it yet. So next, I have the first two books in the trilogy because I'm reading the third one, and that is The Hunger Games. So we have The Hunger Games and Catching Fire, both of which I've read. I'm currently in the middle of um, I'm currently in the middle. That's really annoying of mocking Jay, so I don't have that on my shelf right now, but I will when I have read it. Um so if we I need to just explain I'll go through. So this is on most of my series for fantasy. This is the rest of them. Here's some individual fantasy books, and then it goes into like magical realism and sort of just little bits that I don't quite have. So for example, this is the only historical fiction book I own, so I kind of shoved it in with my magical realism and paranormal stuff. Um, and this is dystopian, and then it goes into some sci-fi. So, the sci-fi, the three sci-fi books I own, I've all read. The first one is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is the story of two boys in a universe where on the last day of your life, on your, on your death day, you get a call on your phone that tells you that you're going to die. Um, and it's a really interesting perspective. It's kind of more of a dystopian than sci-fi, and... Um, well, I guess sci-fi just so like I I'm well aware that dystopian is just a subsection of sci-fi, so I guess it's both. Um, but it's really beautifully written and made me cry a lot because it was very emotional. And these two boys, Matty and Rufus, there's an there's an app where you can meet up with someone on your last day or when it's also their last day and have a friend on the last day of your life, and they meet up and just the, the journey they have is truly beautiful as far as I'm concerned and it made me feel a lot it was a very emotional time so this the second last book I have on this is Amala Motar and Max Gladstone's This Is How You Lose a Time War this is a sci-fi time travel um women loving women romance um queer women love stories are my weakness anyway um because they relate to me um but this in particular was just absolutely fantastic and it was a um it's about these the time war is basically what it sounds like but these two women who fall in love um they send each other letters throughout time like love letters throughout different eras of time but because they're both time traveling they see them within sometimes really short but sometimes really long quantities of one another um and it's just beautiful it was so beautiful and the last book i have on the shelf right now is hank green's an absolutely remarkable thing if you've not heard of this this is a sort of sci-fi contemporary about a girl who has does a video with a robot that turns up turned up on 
in New York becomes like a viral story and then these carls as she called them in this viral video become like a, a real thing like a like an entity and they start turning up everywhere and it becomes a, it's partly a story about the cool sci-fi stuff but it's also a story about relationships and fame and how it affects you and it's gorgeous so that's all i got that is the tour of my main bookshelves um I don't know why, I guess I call it my fantasy bookshelf because it has my fantasy, but it also has, again, as I said and showed you, dystopian, sci-fi, kind of paranormal, any non-contemporary or classic books. All my contem non-contemporary, like any of my somewhat paranormal fiction goes here because technically fantasy is just kind of somewhat paranormal. Um, you get the gist, anything to do with magic or cool technology or how life sucks and is gonna kill us all kind of goes here um but yeah let me let me know um if you have a, how many of these books that you've read if there's any of the ones that i've not read that you would highly recommend um talk to me again in, as well in the comments about if you would like to see me do a tour of my um other bookshelves because i have the one that i'm telling you i can't physically show you but i can show you the books off of basically contains all of my non-fiction and children's books and the one that I have over there contains my classic literature, my contemporary like romance sort of thing and also any autobiographies and memoirs I own. So let me know how what of that you would like to see and um, that's about all I've got. Thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it you know what to do. Please remember to drink your water, eat your vegetables and peace out I guess.